Hello. Well, today I'm going to talk about uh, one of the new films I just got. I talked about a bit last week. And that is Blue Velvet. Um, the film is about, uh, just to get into it, uh, Jeffrey, played by Kyle MacLachlan, who um, is back from college, uh, helping around the house and uh, help run the uh, his father's uh, uh, hardware store uh, while he's in the hospital. And um, <clears throat> he come as he's just going by uh, some like you know when to get to the hospital and suddenly like he's just walking along. He comes across something in that little area. There's like a, a lot of grassy, a, a grassy area with a shed and some stuff, and he's throwing some rocks. And as he's going to get more rock, get like another rock, he come, he sees a severed ear. Finds a little paper bag, puts the ear in it, and then takes it to. The police, um, Detective Williams, um, who's the father of um, Sandy Williams, played by Laura Dern, who is an integral part of the film, and like a love interest to Jeffrey, um, and he's really curious and interested about what happened, like why did somebody get their ear cut off? Who did it belong to, and so on and so forth, and goes on to this like trying to unravel this mystery, and comes across a woman named Dorothy, uh, who um, is a singer. She's a lounge sing a lounge singer who uh, has a lot who has a lot of things going on with her and uh, Jeffrey sneaks into her apartment to, uh, to just watch her because he's just curious and as he's doing so uh, she comes home hides in a closet in her living room and he's watches her as she's on the as she changes as she talks on the phone and then uh, she finds him in there uh, in the closet because of the noise uh, and as she has a knife and she's talking to him trying to figure out why he's there and who he is and then she, things uh, she makes him like, undress and then some, uh, you know sexual stuff going on but then uh, somebody's at her door and uh, he has to go back into the, to that, that closet to hide and he sees um, Frank Booth, played by Dennis Hopper, who uh, he's just a psychopath, really. There's no better word to say it. Uh, also, I like how this is a nice little summary of what the film essentially is about. And uh, he's basically responsible for her being sort of in this sort of position she's in. Um, he kidnapped her husband and his and her, and her uh, son, and um, he cut the her husband's ear off to you know make sure she doesn't do anything like you know can't do this or. 
there like like uh, it showed like like it's yeah he's just demented and uh, he 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 has like this oxygen mask filled with some sort of drug that when he breathes it in he becomes even more psychotic than he normally is and he and Dennis Hopper himself sort of added to that uh, he added what the drug was because originally it was just supposed to be helium um, there's an interview with him on YouTube like about like 45 minutes discussing Blue Velvet and he talked about some of the other films around that time like Hoosiers um, like films he filmed back to back to back um, and it's it it's really in Incredible, uh, the performance he gives. Um, as great as Kama Glocklin, Isabella Rossellini, Laura Dern, you know, and Brad Dorf is in this. You know, he's he's somebody who hangs around, uh, you know, uh, Dennis Hopper's character. You know, as great as all these other guys, all these other actors and actresses are. You know, Dean Stockwell's in the film too. In a scene, and um, you know, just as great as all these guy, all these people are in the movie, Dennis Hopper is the one that's the real standout. Like, if you were to say who's the one actor or actress who is just fantastic, he, I think most people would agree it's it's Dennis Hopper. He truly makes this film even more even more memorable than it already is. You know, the premise alone with the severed ear and this mystery of how this woman who's a lounge singer is mixed up with with this severed ear and how all this connects you know, Dennis Hopper is the one that really he steals the film then again he's the villain and you know, villains often do steal the, the film um, because you know they get to be evil get to have the best lines um, or that's what often times happens maybe not always but usually the best lines go to the villain they get to be pretty much merciless merciless as much as they want or merciful as much as they want um, but they do evil things and um, Frank Booth in this film is a, one of the most memorable characters in film history and, and here's another here's the other blu-ray um, that there is um, you know I rewatched this it's fantastic watch some of the special features and I was going through some of them the only special feature that I can not find is uh, the uh, Cisco and Ebert review I might have mentioned this last week um, but you know, if I didn't, it's I think it's worth repeating. Um, if you're a completist, it's good to both have this set and this one. Um, this is also available on DVD. This version, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but you know, it's it's a. This is a very fine film. But it also might not be for everybody. Um, it's like a... What is it called on uh, Wikipedia? Because they had a very good description at the very beginning. It's a neo-noir uh, neo mystery film that blends uh, you know, psychological horror with film noir. Um, and I do think that's a very good description of the film um, in terms of the genre. Because... It really, uh, there's a lot of like film noir like elements to the film, while also uh, having some psychological horror moments to it, mostly due to the to you know Dennis Hopper, Frank Booth. Um, he, he he's just one of the most memorable characters. Of all time, uh, 
uh, or villains, I should say, of all time. And, and characters, I guess, too, but to me, Bor, you know, more specific, he's one of the most memorable villains in film history. Um, you know, uh, I was sharing my that, the last week's video across social media, and, uh, and I shared it in a, some Facebook groups uh, containing... Criterion, um, and somebody said the film was garbage. Um, they didn't elaborate, um, but you know nowadays if people are going to, they kind of will just say so right off the bat. You don't need to even ask them. But it's interesting. They didn't say why this movie was garbage. But if I was to take a guess, they just aren't fond of the movie. Might not be fond of how uh, Dennis Hopper treats Isabella Rossellini you know, he punches her he's really horrible to her um, now I am not necessarily getting into a whole lot of detail though this is films over 30 years old it's probably no harm in me you know spoiling the film but on the off chance you have not seen the movie um, uh, I guess spoiler alert um, sort of, but I'm not really going to tell you the exact ending of what happens to certain characters, like their fates. Um, but Isabella Rosalina sh Lini shows up at uh, uh, like Alan Glockland's characters. His, his uh, you know, Dorothy shows up at Jeffrey's like place, and she's naked and beaten, and uh, you know, she loves Jeffrey. She like loves him. Meanwhile, you know, Jeffrey like uh, uh, Sandy, and now he's sort of conflicted because he wants to help her, help Dorothy, but he's not sure how to do so. He. He eventually figures out a way how to do so, but um, it takes a while. He, uh, you know, it's obvious he's in over his head uh, quite initially, but as the film goes on, he sort of is able to... Uh, you know, he's able to somewhat, not maybe not necessarily understand what's going on, but he's a lot more aware than initially, because, you know, he was very oblivious as to what was going on with her. You know, he was trying to do what he can to help her, but, you know, if she's not gonna say anything regarding needing help or get, saying how to help her in her situation, not much she can do. And she doesn't want the police to get involved because then, you know, her husband and son would be at jeopardy. So, you know, this is, it's very interesting and very, you know, can be quite disturbing. And that, I think that could be a very good reason as to why some don't like this film. I think this might be, if I had to say what my favorite uh, David Lynch film is, I think Blue Velvet is it. Um, I don't know if that says anything about me, but I don't know. I, I just like this film. I like the performances. I just like how... This mystery sort of unfolds on screen, if that makes sense. It's just one of those movies that, if you really enjoy it, you you re you re you really enjoy it. Like you just you're just all in. You just fuck. Like, basically, you love this film. Whereas if you're not a f fan of the movie, you're not gonna. 
you know, you're just not going to be fond of it. It's just one of those movies that's like it could be quite too disturbing for some. Or for others, yes, it's disturbing. But I can, you know, like I can handle that. It's it's fine. It's not too disturbing. Where after I've seen it once, I can, I will never watch it again, or I don't plan to watch it again, or if I never watch it again, that's fine. Um, but you know, it's just one of those films that's like you know, you just like you either love it or you hate it. And initially, when the You know, when the, the the critics initially reviewed the film, it's quite divisive. Half the critics loved it, other half didn't. Gene Siskel enjoyed this film. Roger Ebert hated this film. Uh, and you can, you know, I, I'm giving my thoughts. I don't necessarily need to give my <laughs> talk about their reasons, but. It's quite interesting to see how different uh, their view is of this film. And you can find it on YouTube if you don't have uh, the, the Blu-ray or the DVD that has this interview. Because, again, I don't believe this has the... Cisco and Ebert review. It's not listed here, and it probably would be if it was there. And when looking at the supplements, I didn't find it any of the options where you can find an access, or like any documentaries or vignettes or any of that. So, you know, I, I haven't seen it um, on here, but, you know. If you have this and you have not seen that Cisco and Ebert review of this film, you can find it on YouTube. You can find it anywhere, I'm sure, on the internet. Um, so it is available. You know, if you don't own it, like on disc form, don't worry. You, you can find it. Um, if you want to watch a, a review of it with Cisco and Ebert, it's like about five minutes long or so. Not too long. The film itself is two hours, so there you go. Um, but yeah, uh, that's my thoughts on Blue Velvet. I think the film should have been should have won an Academy Award at least one. Got not only for David Lynch for best director, um, perhaps if he was not only for original screenplay, maybe he would have had a lot better luck at winning. Um, I can't recall exactly offhand what films you know came out that year. What took the prizes? What was the best? The best films. Platoon. Okay, Platoon. Yeah, yeah, Platoon. You know, perhaps you know original screenplay uh, would have been a better uh, fit. Uh, so let's see here, screenplay. Hannah and Her Sisters won. Uh, Crocodile Dundee was nominated as well as My Beautiful Blondie Red. Beautiful Andretta. I don't know. I, I don't think I've seen this film before. Uh, so, I mean, I've heard of it. Or I've seen the name. Though I'm probably butchering pronunciation of that, so apologies. And then Platoon and Salvador, both written by Elber Stone. So, yeah, perhaps, you know, the original screenplay, he got nominated, he removed one of those films. Uh, maybe maybe David Lynch could have won. Um, and and I, I do think Dennis Hopper should have been nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor for this film. He got nominated for Hoosiers, and he was very good in that film. But between Hoosiers and Blue Velvet, 
I think, you know, at Blue Velvet is the better performance by him. I think it's also his best performance. Um, obviously, that's subjective, so there is that. Um, but yeah, that's in terms of awards. Um, didn't get nominated for Best Picture, though, with the contents of the film. Uh, I can kind of see why maybe writing and like an acting nomination could have prevailed as a winner for the movie or best picture might have been like really you know platoon which won best picture children of a lesser god uh hannah and her sisters the mission and room with a view um you know so yeah there uh, well I don't know if you're, I don't know what you all think. Maybe you don't agree with the film winning any Academy Awards, or any awards for that matter. Or maybe you do. Maybe you think it, Hopper should have been nominated for the Oscar for this film, and he should have won for this film. And maybe you might think David Lynch should have won for uh, writing as well. Obviously, also, he would have been nominated for the writing of the film. Also, you know, the uh, reason why the film is called Blue Velvet is because, well, that's the song Dorothy sings in the lounge. You know, where she sings at the place she's at. And uh, we see Frank with a piece of blue velvet. He's, you know, rubbing it. He's just rubbing it in his hands and his face, he just loves his velvet. And Dorothy has a blue velvet, you know, robe. He's, yeah. And also, you hear the song Blue Velvet at the beginning of the film and other places throughout the film. So, there you go. There's that's the reason why the film is called Blue Velvet. If, if you're curious. Though I think if you've seen the film, it's quite apparent why. Um, so yeah, that's all I gotta say about the film. Um, sort of debating on what to talk about next week. Might do eighteen or nineteen eighty four, or I might just do those Tarantino films. I've been wanted. I've been thinking about talking about. Um, I don't know. It's sort of an up in the air. Sort of is like that for me every week, but sometimes I have in my mind, I'm going to do these movies, and then I do those movies week after week. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that's all I have to say for now. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, you know, I didn't go into deep, a whole lot of details about the ending, but, you know, could be people out there who have never seen the movie, may be curious, may have often wanted to watch it, but for one reason or another have never had the opportunity to see it. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, I just wanted to say, you know, thank you for watching this video, especially if you've watched all the way through. I hope you all have a good week, have a good weekend, and I will see you all next time.